Austin Public School that Austin, Texas. I certainly hope and that America will win the war, and I think that she will. I am glad that all of us have the opportunity of buying bonds for two reasons. One, I think that it is our duty to help our country out, our country that has done so much for us. And secondly, I think if we all have to buy a bond, that we will be more interested in our government in the future to keep it out of war and to, we'll keep a better eye on the international situation because it will affect us more deeply than it has in the past. <laughs> What I'm selling any bonds today Scrape up the most you can Here comes the freedom man Asking you to buy a share of freedom today Any stamps today We'll be blessed if we all invest in the USA Here comes the freedom man Can't make tomorrow's plan Not unless you buy a share of freedom Today. I'm a co-ed here at the University of Texas. I'd just like to tell you how I feel about this war. Last summer and last fall, the war was a thing far away from me, and it was romantic. I thought I envied the girls who had boyfriends in the Air Corps, boys who'd gone away to war. Now, it's real. If you think about it, the Army is just a big Ponzi scheme. At the top is the Army, in this case the 7th, led by some general named Patton. Then the Corps. They got their own general, a homely looking guy named Omar Bradley. Next, the Division, and they keep finding generals. In this case, one Lucian Trusca. In between, you got your regiment, battalion, company, platoon, squad. Then you get to me, Private Benny Travis. I'm a rifleman, and the lowest form of life in the Army. I'm a replacement. The Army has regulations for everything. When to eat, how to dress, who to salute. One of the regulations says guys like me can't question anything. So here I am, a college kid from Austin, Texas, who volunteered to fight the Japanese for bombing Pearl Harbor, heading for Africa. How crazy is that? Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. I do not need to tell you that we are still locked in a deadly struggle with our enemies, the enemies of our ways of life. And the war is still the chief job of each one of us. The greatest production of which we are capable, faithful adherence to regulations that make it possible to supply our men in battle with everything they need, and buying and holding war bonds. These are things that we at home must do to speed victory. Never before have so many people held such a direct share in a great and national effort to save, to buy, and to hold all that we can of war bonds. This is a small service to ask of us who do not fight. Yet it is one of the biggest things that we can do for our fighting men. It is one of the biggest things that we can do for our fighting men. Sometimes I think I'm in the Navy. I was on a troop ship for three weeks. I landed in North Africa, standing on another ship heading for Sicily. We're waiting to be put on boats called LCVPs. The Army's big on acronyms. You know, initials that spell out words. Like me, I'm part of a battalion under some colonel named Bernard. But to the squad I've been assigned to, I'm an FNG. They won't even talk to me. The sergeant just keeps looking over, shaking his head. Patton is trying to get into a town called Nasina, but Bradley's corps is stalled at some place called the Nassau Ridge. So Bradley orders Truscott's division to land Bernard's battalion at a town called Brollo. Only problem is, Brollo is behind the German lines. They must have thought this one up at West Point. This is the second amphibious assault for these guys. You'd think the crowds would have figured it out by now.
packed in the LCVPs like sardines. You're sick to your stomach. It's a combination of the waves and the sights and sounds of shells exploding on the beach and the sea. God, it's awful. I stepped off the ramp and tried to stay calm. There were two guys in front of me and a guy behind me. Suddenly, machine gun bullets ripped through the two guys in front of me. The guy behind me pushed me out of the way and grabbed one of the guys trying to stand him up. Next thing I know, another machine gun burst ripped through him. Blood and flesh splattered in my face. I was too scared to vomit, but I wanted to real bad. The sergeant grabbed me from behind and pushed me up the beach. Mortars and machine guns were firing at us. It was chaos encased in thick smoke. We made it to a sand dune. I turned to the sergeant and asked him what do we do next. He just looked at me and said, stay alive. When the war is over, I'm going to open up a beauty parlor. My boy is going to go to a good American college. We're buying and holding our war bonds for a little home in the suburbs. I saw what happened after the last war. I keep on buying my bond, $75, and I get $100 after 10 years for them. Me and my husband buying a war bond when my son come back from the war and I buying a home out the country. I got a brother over there. When he comes home, we're going to open up a filling station. If that doesn't work, we're going to open up some other business. I have a boy in this war, and I'm saving my bonds for his education when he gets back. The main thing is to help our boys. That's why I'm buying war bonds. War is simple. The enemy's got something you want, you take it away. Simple. We're supposed to move up a ridge called Mount Coppola. It's 450 feet straight up. Once there, we're supposed to meet up with the rest of the division. Simple. Except the Krauts aren't terribly interested in letting us up there. They have been pounding us with mortars, artillery, and machine guns. The sergeant's name is Medford. He's from Iowa. He got killed about an hour ago. A guy named Morris is in charge now. Last week he was a private, now he's a sergeant. What's left of our squad is supposed to support a weapons platoon. They've been shot up pretty bad. The only thing left is a 50 caliber and two guys with BARs. Morris says we're moving forward in 10 minutes. I still haven't fired my weapon. It's been two days since we landed on the beach. I haven't slept or eaten anything to speak of, but I did kill a man today. Morris and I were in a shell hole, and then there was a great flash and bang next to us. I looked out and saw body parts lying all over. The ground looked like gravy as blood and body parts mixed with dirt. Morris said, get ready. We crawled to the top of our hole and saw these krauts coming at us. They would jump from hole to hole, getting closer. As they did, a machine gun would break the top of our hole, making us keep our heads down. See, I told you war was really simple. Suddenly, our artillery opened up on the krauts. I saw a kraut body disintegrate. He was there, and boom, he was gone, like in a magic show or something. Morris tapped me on the shoulder and pointed to a crowd about 20 yards to our right. He said, send the bastard to hell. I lifted my rifle, aimed, and fired. The kraut fell to the ground. I crawled out of the hole. Morris tried to grab me, but I had to see the kraut's face. It was funny. The guy looked so peaceful just lying there. He reminded me of a guy in my high school named Monk. His eyes were wide open and he seemed to be smiling at me, like he was thanking me. Two minutes ago, the ceasefire was ordered, and here is General Tatton, Commander-in-Chief of the American 7th Army, speaking to you from the hilltop overlooking Messina. General Truscott, I appreciate very much your asking me to accompany you in entering the city which you have so gallantly captured. I cannot find words with which to express my admiration of your drive and enthusiasm, nor to express my appreciation of the magnificent fighting qualities and superhuman endurance of the soldiers of the 3rd Division. 
I certainly thank you, and congratulate you again. Patton got what he wanted. He made it to Messina. Morris got moved to another platoon. They made me a corporal, and are shipping us back to North Africa. Like I said, the army is just a big Ponzi scheme. Just the guys at the top getting what they want. That's the story. Put every dollar you have into the green uniform of the E-Bond. And for the nation's future, and for your own, hold them. They work for the war, and they work for you. I know what I'm talking about. I used to work in a war plant myself two years ago. Since then... But I'm still buying bonds. And so are my buddies, millions of them. We're buying them and we're holding them. Just like we held Henderson Field at Guadalcanal. You remember? But we're going right on. For America. And our future. How about you? These cowboys out here uh, from the ranches, we got a few ranches around here. Uh, I see them come into Grand Banelli every Saturday afternoon. And uh, especially on payday, and they're always going over to the post office. And I see them coming out of there with uh, bonds in their hands. And it looks to me like, and from what I've talked to them about it, uh, they're, they're doing all they can. Every man around here is doing all they can to support this war effort. I never thought I'd be happy to be in a barracks again, but I am. A bed, a hot shower, I even got a radio. The only thing missing is a cover for my mattress. The army uses mattress sacks to put dead bodies in for burial. I got a chance to stitch on my corporal stripes. My first job was to teach a bunch of guys fresh from the states how to shoot their rifles. In basic training they were told not to shoot unless ordered to. The army genius running basic training said it was important to save your ammo. How friggin stupid. The new regimental CO says no way. He's taking time to retrain every new replacement. I don't know why he's so worried. Word came today that Italy surrendered. The division invaded just a week ago. I heard the war's over for us. We might stay here in garrison Tunis or guard the airfields. All I know is I've seen enough war and I'm ready to go home. We've got a new 90-day wonder in charge of the platoon. He's been asking for volunteers from guard duty. I figure most of the guys here would probably shoot somebody by mistake. Besides, it means an extra allotment of beer. My first assignment was to guard a cemetery. Graves registration may be the worst job in the army, but it may be the safest. After a battle, these guys come by and pick up the dead bodies. They put them in mattress sacks and pull off one of the dog tags. They mark the graves with a simple white cross or star with the dog tag tacked on. The names and places are from all over the country. New York, California, Florida. I found a guy from Texas just 18. I wonder if he was a student like me, or maybe a rancher. I wonder what he was thinking about three years ago. Now he's six feet under in the Sahara. I was in kind of a hurry. Horace's lodge night. Of course, Rhoda. I hope I didn't keep you waiting. Oh, no. The baby's fine. Your dinner's in the oven, and there's something on the mantel. Good night. sure you'll understand that whatever I do for you and the baby is more important right now than anything else in the world. The value of these things can't be measured in ordinary ways, but must be paid for in dollars and cents, and sometimes in lives. Freedom comes high. No matter what happens, I shall always be with you. Good evening, Mrs. Blanding. It's a telegram. It's from the Navy Department. Yes, I know. Are you sure you'll be all right? Yes, I'll be all right.
we'll be all right. I was called into the Major's office today. I waited as all of the regimental brass marched in and out. Sounds like the war in Italy may not be over after all. The Germans decided to stay and are making a real hell in those mountains. Looks like it might be a few more weeks before the division gets to Rome. What do I care? I'm in Africa. The Major wanted to know why I was pulling so much guard duty. He thought I was being punished. I told him it was better than drill and just sitting around. He told me to report to a place called Red Beach at 1100 hours tomorrow and report to a Captain Miller. Then he said something that almost made me fall over. He said she would give me my orders. She? I arrived at Red Beach. I couldn't believe my eyes. I have died and gone to heaven. Everywhere you looked, women in bathing suits. I was shocked. I stood there for what seemed like an hour. Then this unbelievable brunette in a wet, low-cut bathing suit came up to me and said, What's your business here, soldier? I handed her my orders, said, I'm Corporal Benny Travis. Then I gave her a sharp salute. She looked at my orders and said, Corporal Travis, I'm Captain Regina Miller, Women's Army Corps. This beach is off limits to all personnel except my girls. You got that? I was shaken. I didn't know what to say. I hadn't taken orders from a woman before. I just nodded yes. Good, she said. And Corporal Travis, you can stop staring at my boobs now. It will seem odd when, at some given hour, the shooting stops and everything changes again. It will be odd to drive down an unknown road without that little knot of fear in your stomach. Odd not to listen with animal-like alertness for the meaning of every distant sound. Odd to have your spirit released from the perpetual weight that is compounded of fear and death and dirt and anguish. Yesterday, we landed at the port of Naples to take part in something called Operation Shingle. Italy has been hell for the division. The Krauts are dug into the mountains so deep that the artillery can't blow them out and the Air Force can't bomb them out. That means that guys like me have to do all the work. Naples is great, even with the air raids. Food, wine, and women. Today we got to go to a USO show. It was unbelievable. I saw Bob Hope and Jack Benny. I met a guy from Farmsville, Texas today. His name is Audie Murphy. Really a nice guy. We have a lot in common. Murphy started out as a private and has been promoted to sergeant. Somebody told me he had a chest full of medals. I hope he makes it home to enjoy them. We're back on the boats again. Operation Shingle is another behind-the-lines amphibious assault at a place called Anzio. We landed at Anzio on January 22nd. No crowds. This is going to be a piece of cake. I heard one officer say we could be in Rome by the end of the week. I have been assigned to the 1st Squad, 2nd Platoon, and guess what? I have been reunited with Morris. Things couldn't be better. Now that the beachhead has been established, we have pushed 9 miles inland. The objective is to take Highway 6 and 7, and cut the Kraut's main supply and escape routes, opening up a route for those poor bastards getting counted. Our platoon is supporting a ranger company. What a bunch of gung-ho morons! They're all keyed up about killing the Krauts. Most of them haven't been in combat, but Morris has the right idea. If we come across any Krauts, Morris just hollers to the lieutenant, Rangers up front, and they come a running. I pity the poor Krauts who have to face those fanatics. We've been in the field for nine days. Our platoon has sustained one casualty. One of the FNGs shot himself in the foot. What an idiot. For the last two days, we've been waiting at a town called Cisterna. What we're waiting for, nobody knows for sure. It's just the army. Hurry up and wait. Morris asked me to go to Cisterna with a couple of replacements and see if we could find some hot chow for a change. I walked into a church that had been bombed. It was amazing.
a moment I thought I was in heaven, until all hell broke loose. The crowd started shelling the town. Suddenly, a couple of G.I.s come flying into the church to take cover. I couldn't believe my eyes. They're Japanese! It's been four years since Pearl Harbor and I see my first Japanese. I soon realize that they're from the 36th Division by the T-Patch. The T stands for Texas. On the battlefield and on the home front, men and women are daily making great sacrifices so that freedom and our way of life may be preserved. All of us profoundly trust soon the world may be restored to a just peace. Until we can, with God's help, bring about that happy realization of our dreams, each of us must seek incessantly for ways and means by which the value of our services to our country may be enhanced. Right now, we can do so by buying bonds. Let's make this particular victory a quick and decisive one. I made it back to the squad with one of the replacements. The other one was hit just outside town got it in the head. The bullet came in the front and went out the back. His face was gone. Morris was waiting for me. He said the crowds were counterattacking. Our squad was ordered to hold the line. We have been under attack for 30 hours. The best we can do is dig shallow holes to cover them with our tents. It doesn't help much, not with every kraut gun in the valley aimed at us. The rangers have been taking a hell of a beating, and two companies were ambushed. 700 dead rangers. Damn, this is getting bad. Morris spotted two kraut tanks supported by infantry coming up the ridge. He looked at me and said, let's get the hell out of here. I rounded up what was left of the squad and headed down a trail leading from the front. There were only five of us left. A young lieutenant was posted on the trail, his pistol drawn. He had orders to make everyone stay. Go on back, goddamn you. My orders are that nobody goes out of here unless seriously wounded. What happened next was just one of those things that happens in war. Morris raised his weapon and shot the lieutenant in the head. I asked Morris why he did it. He just said, war is hell, and we moved on. You can name someone in the family to own it with you. A co-owner, which means that you both own the bond like a joint savings account. You can name someone as beneficiary the way you do on your life insurance policy. This means that if you die, whoever you name beneficiary will get the money. If there is a hell, I'm here. We spend our days under constant bombardment and infantry attack. We keep hearing about the invasion of Europe coming any day now. I thought Italy was in Europe. Axis Sally called Anzio, the largest self-supporting prisoner of war camp in the world. The Krauts are sending more crack troops, artillery, and aircraft to wipe us out. We've heard that they've been shelling us with 280 millimeter railway guns called Anzio Annie and the Anzio Express. Nobody even asked Morris about the lieutenant he killed. Sir, I'm going home. I guess you think I'm pretty lucky getting back so soon. Well, I think so too, but I'm not going to apologize. I had a low number coming in. I've been thinking about a lot of things tonight. 
I was thinking about how much a guy can learn in four years. I'm not the same guy that left home four years ago. I feel like a bigger guy. I feel that I'm coming back to a, a bigger kind of home. And that's a pretty good feeling. He's 1A in the army, and he's A1 in my heart. He's gone to help the country that helped him to get a start. I love him so because I know he wants to do his part. For he's 1A in the army, and he's A1 in my heart. And just in case you're quizzical, I'm gonna tell you now. He Passed the toughest physical, he passed it, folks, and how? For I know why he rates so high on Uncle Sammy's chart. For he's 